This video will look at the start to finish furniture design process using SOLIDWORKS and SWOOD. Within our SWOOD design library we can access a wide range of frame templates. Here we will open up a partially completed frame template to add the required finishing touches. As you can see here, we are missing connectors and edge band in the top left hand corner of the frame. We then our library have access to a wide range of connections to use. In this example I'll be using a generic common dowels. These can be added by simply dragging into the required corner. The orientation of the cans can be easily flipped to ensure the customer will not see the connectors. This will add in the required hardware, holes, based on a set of rules predetermined by the user. This allows connectors to be standardised across the design process and in a range of projects. For the missing edge band, we can easily select our required edge band and simply drag and drop onto the required face. This edge band is set up so that we remove material at the same time as adding edge band, as would be done so in real life on the shop floor. Next we need to add a set of shelves. To do this we'll use a set of shelves from the Swoodbox library. Again we can drag and drop these in. It will automatically recognise the internal space and apply a set of predetermined shelves. All Swoodboxes are completely parametric. In this case we can simply and easily change the number of shelves from 4 to 2. Other Swoodboxes can include doors, drawers, feet and a wide variety of others. In this case we can see that the shelf Swoodbox has automatically applied the shelves, hardware and required holes in the frame, again allowing standardisation across projects and users. Once finished the entire frame is completely parametric and can be easily modified via the Edit Frame Property Manager. Here we can modify the width, height and depth of the frame. After rebuilding the entire frame will update, this means the frame template can be used in a wide range of projects, no longer will designers have to reuse basic frames that have been used many times before. Once our template is complete, we can use this within our layout design. Here I have a simple layout. I can access our pre-made templates within our library, and with a simple right click and insert copy, I can add the required templates. Using four location points, I can specify height, width, and depth of the frame, as well as location, as you can see I've done here. We can then use the same template, but specify different size and location. Here I'll add the same template to the island of my layout, these two frames are now completely different sizes, and although the same template, they are completely independent of each other, meaning that one template can meet multiple different requirements within the same project. I can then repeat this process with the same template to give me the other frames of the layout, as I have done here. We can then also add in any of the templates from our library. In this case, I'll add a pre-made frame with a set of partitions. In this case, the top section of the layout, again via the four location points using our simple layout sketch. After this, using simple SOLIDWORKS and SWOOD functionality, I can add the final touches, such as the countertops and side panels, as you can see here. Once we are happy with the outcome, we can run a SWOOD design report. This will collect all the information about the assembly and display in an easy to understand and universally viewable format. Once the report is loaded, these can be viewed inside the SWOOD viewer tool. This allows the user to review the information directly within SOLIDWORKS. However, with a simple double click, we can open up the information in any internet browser, meaning you don't need SOLIDWORKS or SWOOD to view the information on your machine. This report will give access to any drawings that have been made, converting them into PDFs automatically during the report process, meaning they can be viewed by anyone within the company on their machine. The report will also output a list of hardware, including the quantity of each and a breakdown of the cost including list of hardware, panel sizes, materials and finally lengths of edge bands. Not only will SWOOD output a set of HTML forms that can be viewed by anyone, it can also be modified to output a set of CSVs, one of which including panel information which can be linked to SOAR optimization or EOP ERP systems with little modification. Another such CSV can be that of edge banding. Once we have reviewed all the information collated, this can be sent to the relevant people within the company. I can now close down the SWOOD report. Once the design is finished, I can take the complete assembly into SWOODCAM. We will first nest the assembly. This can be accessed with the tools drop down. Once open, we can add in the desired source files. Here we will select the top level room layout. This will add in all the panels ready for nesting. With a simple click, we can get SWOOD to automatically calculate the arrangement of panels within the nest. 
we can then change any options within Nest. In this example, I will only change the offset between the panels to take the tool being used into account. This can then be quickly updated to show the new nesting layout. As you can see here, the panels have been nested onto the correct sheets, taking the material applied at the design level into account. Once satisfied, we can accept the nesting parameters. This will add all the panels nested into a SOLIDWORKS assembly. By accessing the SWID CAM tab, we can review each sheet that has been nested. Here we can see we have a total of five sheets nested. Once happy, we can begin to add the required machining operations. To begin with, I'll add a simple contour. This can be dragged from our machining library in the right hand side that stores our predefined operations. This will also want to pick up all panels that need to be cut out and apply the machining operation. I can then add an auto drill operation, which will automatically recognize any drill holes that have a matching diameter to that on the machine drilling block. Once added, we can run a simulation to decide if we're happy with the added operations, slowing down or speeding up the simulation as required. Once happy with these operations, these can be encoded and sent to the machine for manufacture. For more information, please visit our website at www.solidsolutions.co.uk. Thank you.